has worked beyond my wildest dreams. That's amazing. Gadgets make me so happy. It's Barry here. Hope you're well wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our kitchen today. We're doing another kitchen gadget testing video, part of a massive playlist that I started years ago. So there are hundreds, literally hundreds of gadgets on this playlist. So once this video is over, put on your sweatband, grab the popcorn, have a barrel on, check them out. And please remember before commenting down below, some gadgets can really help people with certain tasks in the kitchen. Others are novelty, but others generally can change their lives. So please do bear that in mind. They're not all weird and crazy and stuff. So we've got a lot to get through. Here's our first one. First things first, this is potentially gonna blow my mind today. This um, is a company called Leku, uh, and I've looked on the box, and I can't actually find the name of this thing, so we're just gonna call it a bread maker, all right? And that is exactly what it is. You see this thing here? It's a bit like a, a motorbike helmet. This, right, is a silicon bread maker. The really cool thing is we make the dough in here like a mixing bowl. We'll then close it up, okay? <laughs> and it'll prove and rest in there. And get this, you can then bake it straight in this mold in the oven, but you can also, this is a slightly bit too big for my microwave, you could microwave it too. You could have bread, like the moment it's proved, straight in there. <laughs> like it's, it sounds amazing. So we'll just use one of their really basic recipes they've done in there and see if this works. So I'll give it a wash and we'll try it. What it's telling me to do is add some warm water in. And this is a sachet of fast action yeast. Now this is what I don't get, okay? The final ingredient, which is actually quite minimal anyway, is some bread mix. Like literally you can buy them in supermarkets. It is ready made next to the flour aisle. Uh, it's already got yeast in it, so this could rise insanely. <laughs> So it's all happening in here. All right, so just to show you, I have not needed that. Look how rough that is. It looks like a piece of cauliflower. So now rather than covering it, all we're gonna do is lock it like so. <laughs> Got a little handbag. There we are then. Uh, and I'm just put on some eggs uh, for the next gadget. Okay, I'm gonna need some hard boiled eggs. So uh, carry this round and back into our warm space by my boiler. And at the end of the video, hopefully we'll have some bread made straight from that bread maker from the oven. That is awesome. I'm really excited for that. All right, so in that saucepan over there, I've got three eggs on to boil, but I think I can squeeze one more in just while they uh, cook away. Anyhow, uh, this thing from Kuhn Recon, a brand that we have had a fair amount of times here on the channel. But their stuff is normally pretty good, and um, ergonomically this thing feels a little bit of an uncomfortable plastic handle, but as always, I get a lot of requests for jar openers. We've done quite a few on the playlist. And this one, although it looks like the Karate Kid, uh, remember Karate Kid 2? Uh, this is called the Gripper, and um, you can hopefully see if I just turn that. Will it let me? Oh yeah, there we go. It just kind of has these three pronged flux capacitor styly. You can kind of twist and change size to the jar of your choice. I've got three jars, let's go. I've got kind of like the three little bears of jars here. I've got baby bear, mummy bear, and uh, daddy jar. Uh, so yeah, when I've tested jar openers in the past to get like the big beastie jar, I tend to get like a huge jar of gherkins. But we seem to be going through this phase at the moment for going through loads of mayonnaise, so a, a jar of that will come in handy. Plus, Ooh, as I just get this out of my fridge, we have uh, a lot of gherkins still. Remember that TikTok recent video I did where you shake up the spices for flavoured gherkins? I said, oh, it'll probably get better over days. It really, really does. These are like my little editing snack when I'm editing the videos. It's honestly, it's so good. But what I'm looking for from a jar opener is sort of like the ease of use in terms of how hard is it to physically like make it grip the thing, okay? Um, because obviously some people struggle with opening jars and even that thing of having to set it up can be a nightmare. I still say the best one I got is one where you sat it on, pressed the button and it closed it. So good, but quite expensive. So let's see, just stick that on. Twist it. Okay, that's, that, ooh yeah, that feels like it bites it quite nicely and then hopefully, oh wow. Oh, that just came off so smooth. And then, oh, <laughs> almost like target practice trying to parachute it on. Okay, that was like, effortless but i don't know that one didn't have a seal on it you just did it didn't you so i'm not gonna this does i don't know in the world of jars does that mean it's stronger a, a slightly more tense kind of bite but that is effortless putting that on there twisting that you don't need any strength at all it's biting it nicely and then look i'm just gonna hold that to support it 
fire. <laughs> That's amazing. It's really effortless. And you can put it back on, there we go. And we can undo it. Ah. Oh. Now this is a big old jar. Here we go. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. Oh, um, probably, apart from the battery operated one, probably my favorite jar opener to date. Uh, just a little sign that one, feeling very confident about that. That is amazing. A little reminder, I do a giveaway regularly to my patrons, a little random one for my top tier one. So uh, good luck for the latest one if you're in it. Uh, let's carry on. Is it weird that I really, re this is cold water just to cool them down. Uh, I really just want to go stare at that bread and watch it happen. It's just bread. I just want to see what it's doing, but I'm going to trust it. Yeah, uh, this next one, cheers, uh, is by Fusion Brands. Never had one from them before. I think I've covered most brands now. Um, this is called the Exact Peel, trademark. Uh, the Easy Eggshell Peeler with a reversible cover included. Nice. So basically housed in here, there's a little bit, you see that little raised bit there? That is a sharper bit of plastic, not a blade, uh, for cracking the egg. But also with this part, kind of like a hack that you guys have sent me before where you can use a teaspoon at the end here, which is conveniently shaped a lot like a spoon. I see what they did there. Uh, allows you to gently peel and remove the eggshell. Gently insert the peeler under the crack shell, follow around the egg to remove the shell and the membrane. Yeah, you always forget about the membrane. The shell gets all the headline. The membrane is kind of like the tag team, you know? Yeah, almost like in wrestling, you know, the, the rockers. Like years ago when I was like, I don't know, nine maybe? The rockers were a thing. It's Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. And Shawn Michaels went off and had an amazing career. Marty Jannetty, like, you know, he was a rocker. I think he did try and do a bit of a comeback, but let's not talk wrestling. All right, so I've given it a wash. Um, I played tennis, if you didn't know. Did a cameo for someone the other day when I was at my tennis match. That was pretty cool. I got a bit of tennis elbow, so I don't know how much I'm going to be able to crack this, but it is, yeah, feels like there's going to be a bit of, a bit of welly in this. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It says to go in the egg and then work your way around it. So you're getting under the membrane. I'm going to keep wetting this. I'm going to give it some respect. Oh my gosh. I don't know if it's going to have a little lump at the top, but that's fine. Oh look, it's taking it off like a perfect helmet like that. And the membrane, that's amazing. Yeah, the membrane is completely off. I think wetting it does help just to get under it. And then you just, I don't know if you get, the camera might not pick it up. You can see just there where my thumb is, there's, there's a membrane underneath. So you've got the shell and then a slightly lighter color before it hits the yellow. Oh my gosh. Gadgets make me so happy. I love it when I show you guys a gadget and I get a message going, this changed my relative's life, it was amazing. I don't think this is going to be like that, it's kind of fun that, you know, you could just, well, use a knife and a spoon. <laughs> but it's a fun little thing to keep around. And say you're baking loads of cakes, you just boom like that, cha! It's quite, boom, that's literally the how you do it, boom, cha! Oh, I just want to show you actually, I, I do need an egg for a video I'm doing uh, later on this afternoon, so... Uh, Hey, that is pretty awesome. But you have knives in your drawer, okay? I'll let you decide. This uh, is, uh, hopefully you can see the <laughs> I'm bending there, it's not some sort of weird spaceship. <laughs> this uh, is, a, is a chopping board. Uh, you've probably seen these before. Uh, this is called the Chop to Pot Plus. I don't know why it's a plus. Did they upgrade it or something like that? It's a chopping board with some nice grooves on it where basically you've got a handle, you can carry it around. Uh, oh, it folds on itself. Maybe you can hang it. I could hang this on the wall instead of our clock. <laughs> But basically you'll use it as a chopping board and then once you're done you can use the handle to fin it and then push it down into your pot. I've got a few random things just to show you it working which will tip into a bowl uh, and that's that's it really it's a chopping board. <laughs> and of course with a normal chopping board you've not really got this handle you're normally holding it there. I'm sure they exist in fact I know they exist <laughs> but this is where it can come into its own so we can sort of fold it up push it down like a little chute and then Use the back of your knife to uh, encourage it into the bowl. And if you can see slightly there, my oily trail. Can you see that? That is like a water park of oily pepper juice. All right, so the reason we've got that filling uh, and we're gonna need the raw eggs is we're building towards an omelette of some kind with a gadget any minute now. But before that, from Chefin, uh, is the handheld slicer called a Fresh Force. Now, Chefin do things like this before, like with lemon squeezes and lime juices and orange juices and melon squeezes and... Squeezes. But this thing works slightly differently. I've actually just taken uh, the uh, plastic tags off so I can show you here. 
And one thing I noticed, for those of you that have watched the playlist, Famous inventor David Holcomb is no longer on the packaging. Where is David? It was temporarily my dream to meet him. I, I'm not so bothered, but like, where is David? It's turned into one of those missing person things on a milk carton. So I figured we'd put this to the test with four different level ingredients. We've got some soft ones, some slightly tougher, and then a really stubborn potato, which if this works, we can make our omelette a Spanish omelette with a bit of a twist. Quite a twist. So it's got one of them like gripper things on it. And I think we'll go with the mushroom first. Oh, there's not mushroom for more than three. <laughs> we'll just do the one. And here we go, down it goes. This should be easy peasy. Oh, look at that. And that was what I was worried about. It fell right through. There was not any mushroom stuck in there. I've got some thick ham here. I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> Come on, shaky, shaky. Yes. Oh, there's one bit clinging in, that's okay. I was really thinking that was gonna get stuck in there. Now, this is where it's gonna get a little tougher. This is uh, an onion, and to be fair to it, I've cut it in half, it's peeled, so it's got a nice flat surface straight onto those blades. And again, it's that leverage, hopefully. Oh my gosh. A little bit round the side where it was like, where it got compressed. That has worked beyond my wildest dreams. Good boy. So I've got this potato, but I think that's just, no, that's too big. So I'll halve it, which is still, oh my gosh, only just gonna fit in there. No, I, I wanna give this away to one of you. I can feel the handle going and that's gonna snap out of there. Look at that. No, it's halfway in. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm not doing it again, because I don't want to break it. I generally, that is amazing. I want one of you to have it. But that is really handy. No pun intended. So I've taken a fair bit of the onion away and the potato out, because we can go for that Spanish omelette vibe, hopefully. Awesome. Right, last gadget. All right, the reason we've got the omelette mix randomly together, we're gonna try and do a Spanish omelette too, is because in the supermarket, I picked up this uh, 15 pounds electric omelette maker, which I've already unpackaged and it's now burning off the factory smell. <laughs> Smell that? What I liked about it is on the side of the box, it said you can make fluffy omelettes, fried or scrambled egg. You just basically make the omelette and hack it up. You can even make a chocolate cake. Uh, a recipe for that is literally just a cake mix poured in there. We've been there before. Will it waffle maker with Stuart? Getting actively dangerous. Don't worry, there's some more of those videos coming. We are in touch. <laughs> but what caught me out is that you can make toasted sandwiches in it. So I'm thinking, oh wow, we're making omelette and then maybe with some of that ham, we'll make a croque monsieur, which is exactly the recipe in there. But the thing that really stood out was that this woman, look at the way that that woman is looking at her partner, I assume. She's like, I don't care about the omelette maker as long as I've got you. Yeah. Where is David? Let's make an omelette. We'll do the Spanish omelette first. Already got that egg from earlier. All right. Bits of potato on there. And then the egg mixture goes in. Nice. So the reason we're doing the Spanish omelette is it says that only needs five minutes, which for the potato in there, I cut it nice and thin um, with, with that gadget. Um, ooh, that's looking promising. Uh, the other omelette actually has almost double the cooking time, uh, which sounds way more sensible. So we'll see if we've got medium rare potatoes any minute now. Here we go. It, I, suddenly in the last minute, it's made a lot more noise as if the top might be hitting that plate at the top. Oh my gosh, we can see an omelette. It's sinking down, we're not getting that brown color yet. I am gonna keep pushing that because I genuinely want this to work and I do not want uh, raw potatoes, which is a highly likely chance versus, I don't mind having a bit of raw pepper in there versus a potato. <laughs> If you don't know, my patrons get like extended versions, early access of all my videos, but I've just realized that there is an ultimate Patreon right here. You. <laughs> you get the best view, mate, don't you? He's like, I was there. There we go, look, it might crinkle down a little bit. Let me turn this off. I am really happy with that. Oh wow, that's come out so clean. Look at the bottom as well. Ah, oh, the potatoes are charred. Nice. That is wonderful. Look at that. <gasps> like a big pillow. But I'm getting a, a medley of that in there. Oh my gosh. This is very hard to do one handed. <laughs> but that'll do. Close that down. And uh, hopefully this doesn't spill out. Bit of bad news for me personally. I've used so many eggs so far with boiling them as well for the other gadget. 
I've not got any eggs to do the Crocman shirt, so once this is done, I'm gonna nip to the shop and get some eggs. If only I had a chicken. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, buddy. Look at that. Yes. Charred ham, peppers, onions, mushrooms, egg. Amazing, these gadgets sort of thing, you get like a cupcake maker, a donut maker, um, whatever maker, they're all kind of the same. They have that rotating red light, green light thing, and they're pretty multi-purpose. And as Stuart and I found out, you can even put a Big Mac in them. And open it up and, oh my God. This is only one of the negatives with it, is you are quite near. Oh, look at that color. The hot plates, if only there was a way to sort of lift that out and then turn it. All right, I've got to try the potato one first of all. Not only because it's getting cold, but I want to obviously see. Ooh, mmm. I mean, it was thin cut potato, but still like to cook through whilst it's encased with something in five minutes, that's pretty good going. And this beast of an omelette, this epic combo. Yeah, all cooked and combined. Oh, wow. That is delicious. All made by gadgets. That's pretty cool. Right, I'm gonna nip out and get some eggs uh, and then we'll do the croque monsieur. Meanwhile, I'll preheat my oven. I don't think this is gonna be very croque monsieur. I think it's gonna be more croque omelette. There's no like bechamel sauce and stuff. So I've buttered this bread. Oh my gosh, it's sticking to the surface. Layer the ham and cheese onto one of the triangles and press the other one on top. Right, I'm gonna do that, except we use that jar opener earlier to open some Dijon mustard. I might as well stick a little bit of that on there. Why not? All right, ham and cheese. This goes down on top. Egg mix. So this is just egg. Oh my gosh. And hopefully that will bond it together a bit. Oh, that is helping actually. Oh, wow. All right, okay, then apparently any excess egg. Shut that down. And I've just turned that on. Let's see. <laughs> this is the whole reason I bought this thing. It's doing something. Oh, wow. Look at that. It looks a bit like a bread and butter pudding. It's a French toast, eggy bread, that's what we call it. Croque-Monsieur hybrid. Oh. <laughs> this is what happens, I end up making amazing things like this. I'm like, no, I must be good. I already had a bit of that omelette. I'm like, no, it's lunchtime soon. I'll have some of this, then I'll have my lunch, and I'll be like, this is why I'm fat. Oh, wow. And is there much of a gooey, cheesy center? Oh my gosh, there is. It smells incredible. Ha, stuck to my lip. It smells better than it tastes. It's okay. It's like a foamy sandwich. The melted cheese ham and Dijon is just making that a thing, but the bread's kind of become a sponge. <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm a, you can wash your car with me. Um, just make an omelette in it. All right, here we go. This, I've completely forgot about it. It's, this video's taken about two and a half hours, so it's had a long time uh, to rest. Let's open it up. Boom, look at that, that has spread out. Remember, it was quite small. It's now filled pretty much the base and starting to climb the sides. I was a bit, that when I first did the mix, the like, instructions, like that's not much in there, but hey, we leave it open like that, exposed, and it bakes in my oven that's preheated for half an hour. That's not something you see every day? Oh my gosh, <laughs> can you see that? Oh, it's like a little baby. It's a lot lower as well than I thought. Wow, that is it's got an amazing crust on it. But look, you've got all that volume left. And we just followed the quantities in the instruction book. Well, we could make that way bigger, but let's see if it's bread. Ah, wow, it's, it's quite thin. Yeah, it is right into the middle piece. It is all done there and not soggy at the bottom either, which sometimes you can put on a wire rack to really fully cool it down. You can see the heat coming from it and it's a little bit bumpy on top because we didn't need. There was no need. Incredible. I'm not sure if this is my favorite one today or this bread maker. That's got way more potential. This is like an unnecessary thing that's quite fun. So check out the rest of the gadget playlist now. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe if you are not already. Cheers folks, see you later, bye.